Morning, everybody, <clears throat> including people in TV land. Welcome to our worship of God in Jesus Christ. It is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, Royce would like us to announce that he would not like us to announce that he has no announcements. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sam. I'm sorry, I was just going to announce that Royce has no announcements. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else not have announcements? Norma doesn't have any. Does anybody have any? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Things happening in the parish, you saw in the announcements, maybe, or you will later, what they need at the little free pantry for um, stocking up for back to school. <clears throat> Friday night is family movie night. They're going to show cars. And Saturday is Pastor Paul, men and more men at Faith at 9 a.m. Anything else? Then please rise. For Yes. Yes, we were praying for them. For those of you that didn't hear that, Eric and Sammy made it back safely from their Canadian canoe trip and had a fantastic time. So yay. Yay. Yay, see? Anything else? Then please rise for the order of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, and we have hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest, we have spoken falsely, and we have lacked the courage to speak. <clears throat> Forgive us and grant us your mercy. Our God offers boundless grace when we fail picks us up and gives us strength to continue. Receive the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Hear, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Now you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Psalm 145, we will read responsively. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, 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 and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are brought down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways, and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You hear their cry and save them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. Amen. The epistle lesson is from the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, beginning with the fifth, the first verse. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own brothers and sisters, 
my own flesh and blood. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the living of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them and cured their sickness. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You have to help me this morning, because I have a half-formed sermon. And what I need from you is to understand what I mean. Because <laughs> I know what I mean here, but it's not coming out of my mouth right. I think you've heard this story before, right? Yes. yes. Do you consider it a miracle? Yes. Yes. Very good. Uh, what is being shown forth in this miracle, do you think? God How does God provide? That's not a miracle. God provides every day. How is God providing here? He's taking a little bit and making a lot. And what's that make him? God provider. <laughs> okay, so you're saying the same things over and over. Jesus is being shown forth here as creator. <laughs> creator. He took five little loaves of bread and two fish and fed 10,000 people. He created, right, because that's what God does. God is creator. He created more bread. He created more fish. Right? Yes. Okay. Right? Yes. All right. There you go. All right. As long as we're all on board. There's this thing now, I don't know what to call it, alternate interpretation of this story that's become fashionable of late that says, here's what really happened. The disciples told Jesus, you need to send these people away because they're, they're hungry, it's late. Jesus said, you feed them. And they said, we only have this. And Jesus said, bring it to me. And when Jesus was praying over it, this little meager meal, and breaking it, other people who also brought food felt guilty and got their food out and began to share it among each other. That's what really happened. 
Guess who doesn't like that interpretation? Go ahead, guess. It would be me, yes. It would be me. And one of the reasons I don't like it is because this story is in scripture, and I don't know if you ever read the Bible. But you'll notice when you do that they don't wash white, wash white. They don't whitewash stuff. If stuff is weird or stupid or bad, they just flat out tell you. The Bible is not all, oh, look at these wonderful people, these great stories that are happening. Oh, these people are perfect. It's not like that at all, is it? So I have a sneaking suspicion that if that's what happened, the gospel writers would have said, you know what really happened? Jesus started praying and everybody felt guilty and they got their SpongeBob lunch boxes out and they shared their Twinkies. None of the gospel writers report that though. But pondering these things this week, I thought, wait, there is something that the people are doing that we can emulate. They gathered 12 baskets full of leftovers. 12. I mean, it doesn't say how big the baskets are, but that doesn't matter, does it? There's leftovers, and they gathered them. And this is what that said to me. Isn't it interesting, if you look at life, look at how people act, that the poorer people are, the more generous they seem to be. I've seen that over and over and over again in my life. And thinking about these people, Jesus, poor Jesus, his, his cousin just got beheaded. He's trying to go away for a minute to gather his thoughts. People track him down. But when he sees them, he has nothing but compassion for them. So he heals the sick that they brought. And if you think about that, these aren't the rich dudes, right? This isn't the Sanhedrin coming to Jesus. It's not the religious leaders. It's the common folk, the poor people. And if they're bringing their sick to Jesus, I'll bet, I'll bet 80%. 80% of those people were the person in the family that worked and now couldn't because they're sick. They have nothing. And yeah, maybe they weren't expecting to stay this long. Probably all of them thought, oh look, Jesus snuck away, I'll go find him. You know, and I'll be the only one. So what, 10,000 people have that same thought and traipse after Jesus. <clears throat> but they're hurting. And the disciples answer, I'll send them into the village to buy food, like they had money to do that. I seriously doubt it. I mean, not enough to feed their entire family, I'll bet. So Jesus takes these loaves and fish and blesses them and distributes them, and 10, 000, at least 10,000, because it's 5,000 men, and then, oh yeah, women and children, like they count, but... It's at least 10,000 people. So here are these people that are in need. They receive from God this abundance because they all ate till they were full. And they have leftovers. And what do they do with them? What they don't do is put them in their pocket and take them home for tomorrow. They give them back so that other people can benefit from this abundance. They don't hoard it, they give it back. I think that's miracle number two in this story. And I ponder why it's people who need that are the most generous because they know what it feels like to be in need. And they don't want that for other people. They look at people in need just like Jesus and have compassion. And they can help at all. They absolutely do. And then, of course, I fell into despair 
because why wouldn't I, about the great chasm between the rich and the poor in this country and how people don't seem to be doing anything about that. Not you, of course. You guys, and I mean this sincerely, you're like the most generous people I ever met in my life. Every time we have a, a need arises, whether it's within our congregation or not, you guys are right there with abundance of stuff to give. My favorite story was, well, one of my favorites is when we were getting a, Glade Run wanted a basketball hoop, you remember that? And I said to you on a Sunday morning, you weren't prepared for this at all, I just said, they need a basketball hoop and it costs this much money. So if you want to contribute next week, on the way out, you guys stuff my pockets full of cash to the extent that we got Glade Run two basketball hoops and two basketballs. That's how you operate. And I am deeply grateful for that. But most of the world does not do that. Most of the world sees, oh, I have this, I worked for it, I earned it, it's mine. If you worked, maybe, I hate that so much. And pondering, what can we do as the church to address this inequity? What can we do besides being gigantically generous, which you are? I mean, can we address this some other way? This is the part where I know what I mean and I can't say it. And I'm inviting you into this conversation with me to think about this this week and ponder this. How can we address this as church? Even as individual members of the church, as congregation, as the ELCA, as church, how do we do that? And I mean the systemic stuff, not just making sure people have what we can share right now, but so that they don't get hungry again and don't need clothes again. And don't, you know, what's Jesus say all the time we're supposed to do? Feed the hungry, give food, or, yeah. Feed the hungry, take care of the thirsty, right? Clothe the naked, take care of the widows and the orphans and the aliens among you. That's our number one thing, besides love God. And I, I do fall into despair. I, I should stop reading. That's what I should do. I should just stop reading. I saw a chart the other day that listed 20 countries, 18 European countries, and Canada and the United States. And the list was, here are the number of people in these countries that declared bankruptcy last year from their medical bills, which we all know is huge in this country, right? There were 19 zeros. Guess which country didn't have a zero after its name? And guess how many people declared bankruptcy just last year? 630,000. How can we let that go on? I mean, we can't. We can't. If we are following Jesus and we know these things are happening, Yes, by all means, be as generous as you can, but we can't let this systemic stuff go on. It's literally killing people. So I'm inviting you, please, into this conversation. Think about this. Research it. I'm going to be doing research. Can we have conversations about this? I mean, seriously, can we? And figure out what we can do, how we can actually help people. Can we do that? Are you willing to do that? No? Are you? No. All right, that makes me sad. Well, I'm going to do it. And I invite you to join me. Amen.
God has made us a holy people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Lord, you gather your church together by the Holy Spirit and place us within the communities for mutual support and love. Reveal, reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors and inspire the people and leaders of our parish and those of Trinity Gibsonia, First Leechburg, and our Redeemer McMurray to complain to pro to proclaim your abundant love to the world throughout our words and deeds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your desired peace and justice in the world instill within President Biden, Governor Shapiro, and all political leaders that same desire and guide us all to support the work of international peace organizations and find ways to bring relief for those in war-torn areas, especially in the Ukraine, Pakistan, and Senegal. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting. Heal those who are sick or injured and send us to accompany those who are alone, to provide for all who hunger or thirst, and to console the bereaved. Because your presence brings joy to the sorrowful, we ask that you attend to all who call on you, especially those we name aloud or silently. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have placed before us Dominic, Lawrence, Claire, and many other examples of faithful living saints who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their bold lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed meet, right, salutary, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, the Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup, again gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, who longs to be with us. Come and receive him with joy. setting me straight again on the sermon, so all's good.
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment you have re we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into the world through the one who is, dearest, who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Jazz hands. I think I'm doing jazz hands. Christmas people. <laughs> Christmas people. Christmas people. You're all sorry. <laughs> Go in peace and share the harvest. We will. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ go with you. And also with you.